Well, we're at the tail of the whispering walls. Ben, did you remember this episode from growing up? Fuck no. And well, funny enough, I, I remember this one, yeah, from back in the 90s, but also I watched this episode in the tail realm when I was getting the idea for this podcast a few months ago. Like, this is one of like the seven I, I watched. This is one of the ones you wanted to shit on, huh? Well, no, actually, actually, I, want to I, shit on. I really didn't think it was that bad. I watched it last night and I was like, oh boy, <laughs> this isn't going to be a long one for me. Well, my my only major issue is the story is kind of a little sporadic because the episode starts out with the group walking through the woods to go to the Midnight Society. They mentioned that it's a full moon or a leap year. What's that noise? You know what it is. All right. They come in and they're shocked to see some hooded creature by the fire who turns out with some creepy mask. And like everybody looks shocked, but I'm thinking to myself, "Who's missing?" Yeah, the who's missing, and they're going to the fucking campfire where the shit has happened multiple times before, where they see like some either a, a dead prow queen or uh, some type of mythical creature or somebody dressed in one of those black yoga suits. Or is this surprising anymore? I, I mean, it, this is supposed to be a secret location, so I mean, it shouldn't be a big shock. Yeah, well, it's really Betty Ann playing some Kristen shit because you know Kristen likes to dress up and stuff for her stories. You know, Kristen's been showing up on time, though. Give her props for that. That's good. Hey, did you see David there? Because I don't remember seeing him in the intro of this. He might have been up her ass. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go back here real quick. If he is here, I don't think he had any lines. Yeah, he's probably following, following the trail. Maybe his contract ran out because I remember the, there was an episode we mentioned where he, he wasn't in uh, one of the scenes. He might have been sick. There he is. There yeah. He's been in the background there. He just doesn't have any right lines. Bo- right think. behind Kristen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean now. Betty Ann says that the mask is only protection. Frank thinks she's full of shit. I agree with Frank because that mask had... Absolutely nothing to do with this fucking uh, episode. No, it didn't at all. I, I, maybe they were filming another episode prior and it ended up getting scrapped. And they're like, hey, we got these props. We got to use these for something. Uh, I mean, th- we're going to run into the same thing when we record the next episode for the day. Uh, so- something that has nothing to do with what actually happens. <laughs> But keep going. Betty Ann says that it was an old superstition with a full moon being on a leap year, February 29th. Although I looked online, I couldn't find anything about this. So I imagine they just made it up for the episode. They're just like, what, what would make this can be superstitious? Okay. Native Americans have their picture taken. Full moons on leap years. What else were we ran into? Um, the superstitious elements of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I don't know. I mean, I've knew they. I know they talked about black cats and shit, um, being like witches. Um, what about breaking mirrors or uh, walking our ladders? Maybe, maybe the mirrors. But I mean, the only people that have to worry about the ladders are the stagehands for these fucking uh, episodes here. Yeah, um, I was wondering if this ep- episode was also educational because she has to go about saying that the leap years happen every four years. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that makes sense. And then says that, yeah, when it's a full moon, the spirits are hunting and they may be out for you. If we want to get educational, I'm pretty sure that Julius Caesar is the one that implemented the four, uh, the la- the extra day every four years. Can you fact check that? All right, while you're on that, I'll explain to our listeners what's happening in this episode. Okay. Betty and explains that Claire and Andrew Dickens are on their way back from the amusement park with their Asian babysitter, Louise. I looked up this woman, by the way. This was like one of only two acting credits she had. Is that a surprise? I did like the parks. I, I didn't realize this until I watched this uh, recently that the amusement park they went to was Funland, where Laughing the Dark Ride. He says it's amazing. So it still exists in their universe. 
So here it is. Julius Caesar was behind the origin of leap year in 45 BC. The the Romans had 355 calendar days to keep festivals occurring each year, 22 or 23 day month. It was created every second year. So it it was Julius Caesar that started leap years. No, that's what every day. You know, I uh, I really forgot the intro to this episode, but then when I went to this car scene when I'm driving down the highway, mm. I immediately recognized the episode of the characters. Well, let me tell you, I don't know how she mist- you know, mistook a piece of plywood, spray painted Route 9 in the opposite direction. For an actual fucking road sign. Yeah, I was thinking that because it looked like one of those like piece of shit signs that people use for like when they have a yard sale. <laughs> like they just find some uh, old plywood or something to spray paint or some <laughs> spray paint they got from Dollar General. I also like the fact that this kid Andrew has one of those plastic fan spinners, and I don't think I've seen one of those in about fifteen years now. Are you? You, ha- you haven't been to an Ocean City, uh, you know, tourist shop and. In that long, either. you know, I, I try to avoid those fucking things now. Uh, that if you would have went in there, often. you would see one. <laughs> I have seen like the bigger ones where you can put like water in them and shit. Yeah, it's like a it's like a whole bottle. And my my other thing with this getting lost thing is, they usually when you drive down a road, the direction that the thing's going will be the opposite on the other way. Yeah. So would they have gotten that lost by going that way? Because it's like they're doing Route 9, but they don't specify north, east, west, or south. But wouldn't they just go down there and then see like another sign? And maybe exit that goes the other way? Yeah. If you, they, they if say, you miss it, you can get back on it. Yeah, they're just saying they're looking for Highway 9. They never say the actual direction. However, Louise also says... At the inn that they go to, that's a logo for Victor Heights. And I looked it up. There's no Victor Heights in Canada. I'm assuming that's where this is taking place just because of all the uh, things that we've had so far and the fact that they mentioned Left in the Dark. And we were certain that that episode took place in Canada because they're playing hockey and stuff. They pull up to the Whisper Inn. And I thought that sounded like shit as well. That wasn't as bad as the fucking yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't, road sign. It wasn't as rough. I, mean, I could tell like, they just. Got someone for chief on the job. They go in, they see a bunch of abandoned chairs and things up on the bar. They see an old wagon wheel. You right over there? Yeah, man. Getting settled. They ask if anybody's there, but I mean, I thought it was pretty apparent that that place was vacant and abandoned. Yeah, I mean, it's got to have some kind of spook factor for the kids. Can't have people in their thirties. <laughs> yeah, well, they see some guy from Mommy Comical Romance who has to shut the door. You know, <laughs> at first I thought it was a skeleton suit until he walked up, and uh, he looked like straight up Frankenfurter from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a uniform of some type of organization. I forgot what. They say they are lost, but he says they're precisely on time. She keeps asking for directions, and he says he knows a shortcut. Take the dirt road, go through the woods, and it'll cut back on time. Now, why do people suck so much at directions on this show? Because we saw this shit happen in the Phantom Cab, where he's like, oh, yeah, screw out of that road, wait for something. Yeah. <laughs> if, you see the, if you see the bridge, you've gone too far. Yeah, what bridge? <laughs> just give some more directions. Like, yeah, it's good. Like, Likewise, people just give you some shit directions. Like, uh, yeah, go turn down there where Bobby uh, Joe Shaler is. Yeah, where just, it used to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make a right with his broken down car. They leave, and he gives an evil laugh. And yeah, again, why take directions from someone who does that shit? The wind starts picking up around them, but I noticed like no branches in the background are moving. It's like just someone had a giant fan on them. <laughs> Then they pull up to this, and I don't want to say pull up, but more the their car conveniently breaks down yeah. at this historic mansion. Uh, we did miss that he was really pissy about his door staying open. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a moment here. But he, he said it at the 
He said it at the thing. Yeah, I mentioned that. I missed it. I must. I must be getting there. Yeah, I said he, he yells to shut the door. Oh, okay. The babysitter tells them to wait there while she goes in. As she goes to knock on the door, it opens randomly. Yeah, that's a good sign, right? It's always good. You just walk right in, then. They wait for a little bit, and then Clara says she's going in. I had a note here. This looks like a prop house for a music park ride. Like the interior looks like one of those like walk through haunted house you can go to. I, I just like how like. As soon as they walk in, it's like all decrepit and shit. But then, like, you see a shot of like a hallway, and it looks great. Yeah, I I, I like the decor of this house. To be honest with you. Yeah. So why is the fucking lobby shit? And then the other- <laughs> because that was a different location. <laughs> that was the inn. This is the mansion. No, in the mansion. In the mansion. Oh, the yeah, where the stairs go up as you walk. Yeah. In. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, I mean, maybe they had their priorities also for <laughs> parts of the set design. When they go upstairs to come to this room where there's this music box playing in the middle of there. It's a, it's a carousel, so I wonder if that was a reference to the music park that I mentioned earlier. I don't, I, I don't know if uh, Funland has a haunted uh, carousel. carousel. Yeah, like uh, something that could come this way or something like that. Well, funny enough, when we get when we get to the end of Are You Afraid of the Dark, there is a carousel. But I'm relatively sure that in season two, they weren't planning to make reference to it fucking six seasons down the line. You never know. Although I was laughing eternally when I saw this scene because Andrew yells out a party. Yeah, it's a party. Like, that was not my first reaction. Yeah. My reaction was, hey, this room is really fucking creepy looking. Yeah, the carousel's creepy. I, I don't know what kind of fucking parties he's been to, but I'll tell you, every single one that I've been into my life does not have a carousel in the middle of a damn dining room table with fucking banana splits all over the damn place. Well, I was just laughing because it's just like right there. Like the rest of the room looks like shit. Yeah. I mean, could they play perhaps the streamers to make the room look brighter? Yeah. And then she says, Louise planned this. I'm sure of it. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know what kind of babysitter, you know, you have. But I don't. My babysitter wouldn't wouldn't plan uh, us going to a creepy mansion and, and eating banana splits in some dark corner of a fucking mansion. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore. She also just breaks down conveniently there, like has nothing on her when she walks in. All of a sudden, has all this stuff. <laughs> well, I also laughed at this part because he goes to pick up this banana split, and Clara says she wants a bite, and then like it goes to the floor because they're fighting over it. But it was like. A few dozen other banana splits to the table, so why would you should pick up our own? Yeah, and also, if uh, if that was the case, if they were fighting over it, wouldn't it have fell towards her? Oh, well, I guess he was pulling it away, yeah. so never mind. But there was a creepy effect, though. Um, yeah, when, when it goes to the floor, they wait a minute, and it starts catching a fire. And then we get uh, Jared Way come back in here. I will say I did like how like his fingers were coming through the floor. Did you notice that? Like I know it was like that cheap, that cheap uh, like holographic thing at first, but then <clears throat> the way they set it up, his fingers were coming through the floor. I'm going back to the episode now because that's one. Of... Oh, you scrolled way too far. Uh, I don't think I did. Oh, I see now. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I kind of see that vibe. That's a little preview down there. They run back to the Whisper Inn, where there's a bunch of tumbleweeds going across there. In Canada. Yeah. In Canada, tumbleweeds. I, you know, I, I think the only time we saw, I remember we were driving through like Kansas or Nebraska, and we made some joke, like there's nothing out there, and we saw tumbleweeds <laughs> go across. It came by me and Ben live with a bit of lead. Like we, just, we don't have those here. But when we when we did drive my car uh, cross-country when I was in the military, we did see... We did see tumbleweeds. No, <laughs> yeah, we're, we should make a road trip to Canada because we need to do all your favorite dark tour and just try to find all these locations. Only if I can uh, meet Ross Hall. No, we'll make it happen. <laughs> In the end, it's now very vibrant. Now, I was thinking 20s at first because I saw the couple there, but I, I noticed when I watched this again, these people are from various points of time. Yeah. Like that one woman's 
dress is from the 1800s. That yeah. one guy looks like he's from about the 50s, and we have a salesman who looks late 19th century, early 20th century. They try to ask them for some specifics. However, they don't seem very helpful to them at first. They explain that their babysitter is lost, but like someone offered some punch. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, <clears throat> there was like a a Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, <clears throat> like I don't know, it made me think of it when they walk in, they say something, and then the music cuts off. Yeah, that that's one of those tropes of all yeah. TV shows. The, the jukebox actually had to really turn them off, or the a record sc- uh, scratch happens. Large Marge sent me. Yeah. Although it's also like that trip that I have a big pet peeve of where someone goes to talk on a bike and there's instantly feedback. Like, it's just a sound engineer it always sucks at every single one of these uh, events these people are having in TV shows and movies. You don't need to have feedback to know the microphone's on. <laughs> It'd be like if you heard feedback every time we go to start this podcast. How annoying that would be. So, that that woman that offered the punch... This is probably one of my main concerns with this episode. Like, I, I know when we were going to get beer and shit that I was like shitting on it, but um, she keeps saying, "You remind me of my daughter Jane." So sad, so sad. What's sad? The fact that you went missing, or did she die, or what the hell? Yeah, I was it, curious about yeah, that. It's sad, but you never elaborate on what the fuck happened. Well, maybe that's part of the allure. Maybe it's supposed to be a mystery. It doesn't come off as that big of a fucking mystery. It just comes off as you didn't fill in the plot. Did you uh, notice that the jukebox is playing the theme song at one point? Yes, I did notice that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some way to tie it with some type of mystery thing. Like, has that been the theme song for the Midnight Society for many years? Or, like, where does the song exist in some type of universe? <laughs> Again, you have to analyze. Well, I mean, scenes. maybe they couldn't. Maybe they couldn't get rights to like fifties music, so they just fucking slowed down their their "Are You Afraid of the Dark" theme song. Yeah, of course. Like many of these shows back in the eighties and nineties could not use licensed material. I, I even remember like there were some controversial things with like Neil Young and things where they. Refuse to have the music and commercials. Nowadays, you respect that and you want that for, for the income, uh, especially since physical CD sales and record sales are down because we have streaming and all this other stuff now. And I, I mean, a lot of the TV shows that we just had the most generic key of music, we, we saw that in the dark music episode where like the guy's just listening to instrumental rock music most of the time when the radio is playing. Right. They deny the punch and ask for help, but someone says they'll be fine once the sun sets. And they mention the leap year and the full moon. <clears throat> and what the fuck was this with acting, man? It's I, I, the, the Louise character was terrible. The kids are bad, and these adult characters. I thought the acting was oh, just dude, weak. Th- this guy from like, what, I get, what was he like? Sixties. Oh, chill, chill, sister. Oh yeah. That... <laughs> so all right. When they say when she's when they say she's in the house, he's like, "Well, is the house in her?" No, she's in the house. Like, it didn't make any damn sense when he like flipped it on itself. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, the writer for this episode, by the way, was a person named Allison Lee Benjamin, and I don't remember seeing that name on any other episodes. I'm gonna look at IMDb. This is, this is why. There, there were <laughs> two other episodes. Uh, were, they, were they shitty ones? Well, or we haven't got well, to them. Well, yet? the other was well, what we're doing today, which is Dark Dragon. Oh, well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do they have a mailing address? We'll, we'll find them on Facebook later. Because I will send them a bag of dicks. Have you seen those? <sighs> no, but I have some of those uh, postcards. What was uh, once the fuck off ones and the other ones are you suck? Either way, yeah. This. <laughs> Give me the you suck one. We'll mail it to him and be like, this is because of Dark Dragon and Whispering Walls. You know what you did. And then we had to plug this podcast, of course. (laughs) Their most recent thing is a show happening right now called Cardinal. Never heard of it. I think I did. I I think I did. The the Pinkertons, you watched that show? I've heard. Well, 
I mean, I know who the Pinkertons are, but mm-hmm. I haven't watched the show. Bomb Girls. What? No. CSI Miami. There's only one CSI. FX is serious. What the fuck? All this is either shit I don't care about or shit I don't <laughs> never heard of. I should have a case where we check these credits. I'm look I'm on IMDB right now. I'm trying to find out the guy who was playing that character for the fifties. I think I might have to go to the episode here and look at the the, the credits at the end. <laughs> it's not it's not even listed. We'll, we'll cross that bridge. I mean, w- would you want to take credit for that? No. I mean, we, we talked about it before, like, how some of these people got these jobs. And, like, I literally think that someone was just friends with somebody who worked this show. Hey, we're, we're filming on Sunday. Could you show up? We need some actors. Like, that, how we made Hookman, too. Pretty much. At least these motherfuckers got paid. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know how. It could, it could have been a bag of pitas or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we did provide alcohol. The, so. the salesman character says that the house is Master Raymond's house. And when they go out of here, I was just like noticing what these kids are wearing because the one kid has like a pink pillow with like teal uh, and bremers <laughs> around the collar. Right. And very, very 90s. So here's the, here's my question. Because they run out they run out and they're literally outside for two minutes about, oh, maybe we can use their phone. Wasn't that, wasn't that the fucking idea in the first place? Well, isn't that why you went in there in the damn first place? Yeah, I was wondering that because like, why, why could they just have said it before? But they go back in and of course it's vacant again. Yeah, it had, like, that's the only thing. It had nothing to do with, like, other than, okay, we moved back in. It's creepy. Like, it was creepy in the first place. This shit was abandoned. Now there's people from all these different eras in there. Okay, that's creepy. I don't need to know it's abandoned again. Which yeah. which house are they stuck in? Are they stuck in the house, the mansion, or are they stuck in this inn? I think the idea is that the entire area there in the woods is haunted. I mean, I can see this Master Raymond guy being able to haunt both places. I get that. Mm-hmm. Because... You know, he's in control of both. He's rich, he, whatever. But if if your soul gets stuck in this house, shouldn't their souls, I don't know, be in the fucking house? <laughs> well, the the woman comes back to the house later on. You, They're all in the house again. I didn't see the 50s guy. They're, I saw them on the, on the walls. But. Yeah, okay. Their soul's in the house. So why is it in the end? There's no picture frames to hold their soul. Maybe it's the same property. I mean, whatever you say, Adam. We'll have to ask uh, Allison Bingerman. Benjamin. Whatever. Tomato, tomato. We'll have to ask her for <laughs> clarification. All right. Well, someone's going to postcard here shortly. Now, they had the brilliant idea since, you know, they just ran into a bunch of ghosts. And everything's creepy. They go back to the fucking haunted house. Because Louise is a good babysitter. She's a good babysitter. And they can't just say, hey, mom and dad. You know, Louise fucking hooked up with some dude at a truck stop and <laughs> left us out there. And so they hear various sounds once they're inside of the house. Like, well, this is the first time going in. They hear Louise's voice. And then <laughs> oh. they find her in the living room through that like, mirror reflection. They, they hear her terrible acting. Yes. Yeah. It's then, hard to miss. Yeah. Ma- Master Raven calls the fake about. That's when they go upstairs. And she mentions Claire mentions that, and she needs Andrew because he, he's smart. I wouldn't need Andrew for any damn thing because he's a little punk bitch. <laughs> uh, he, when he's hungry, he's fucking worthless. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I, I the, these kids I looked up at IMDb. They didn't have much action credits after this either. No, they did like one other thing. Well, no, the the boy did. The girl only did one other thing. All right, so this guy, Andrew, his real name is Ryan Gifford. Oh, yeah, his last, last acting credit was in 2010. Score a hockey musical. Wow. He shot for the stars there, didn't he? All right, I'm on the after credits here. 
I think that the, some of those characters may have been uncredited. No shit. Yeah, they yeah they are uncredited because they, they <laughs> only had. I told you they don't want to put their name on shit. It, it was like. Yeah, Louise, Claire, Andrew, Master Raven, Elegant Lady, whose name is Violet in this episode. I don't know why they just said that. Yeah. Then they had the Midnight Society, and that's it. They don't mention the sales. They don't mention the 20th couple. They don't mention the uh, guy at the end of the episode. They don't mention the 50th guy. Uh, this, this is just odd. Okay. <laughs> Back to our regular sketchy programming. Once she says that he's smart and he needs her, he thinks of, well, she says he's smart because he thinks of things that she doesn't. Says they have to look upstairs. Upstairs, they find Louise holding a baby. I like how she says she just found it randomly. I found this baby. Not, now she's breastfeeding it. She I don't says, think she's breastfeeding it, but I mean, no. I looked her up on Mr. Scan and she's not on there. Oh, you did? Uh, well, I mean, you know. Curiosity, man. <laughs> she says they can go as soon as it falls asleep. But then it starts to turn evil because she just throws the blanket at Claire like it's a giant snake. I thought that was pretty creepy. It was a couple snakes. That was just that one big one. Mm-mm. You sure? Yep. You got to admit, that was fucking scary with that one big snake going on that baby doll, though. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there, but there is two snakes in that in that mountain, oh that that mound there. But it was kind of creepy when uh, I don't know Louise's voice changed into a dude. I'd just be like, you know what, fuck this, we tried, and just leave. Yeah, well, I like how this room. You know, I'm looking at the episode again. Like this room actually looks pretty legit. Like they had a crib back there and a basket or a basket net. This this room is one of the better decorated ones for a set, rather than just have like. A bunch of props in the middle of the room, and then like everything else looks like shit. This was the most memorable scene for me in this episode, by the way. I always remember this scene of her just tossing this, getting evil. And Claire's like, oh shit, what the hell? What the fuck is with this Daily Motion thing? It's freezing up on me all of a sudden. There we go. Say, so, okay, pause right. it. Oh, I asked you now, you know, there's like two snakes. And the evil laugh happened. Yeah, because yeah. you see what's moving, and it's way smaller than that big ass snake. Mm-hmm. They need to Jake the Snake Roberts like on on scene for this uh, this type of. You know, we have pot- an episode coming out called the Tale of Jake the Snake, right? What? Yeah, I'm dead serious. It has nothing to do with Jake the Snake Roberts, the wrestler. Well, wait, can I can I just tell you? Did you ever watch that? Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts uh, documentary on Netflix. Yeah, it's amazing. I had I love it, dude. Yeah, that guy has a great story. By the way, that Jake Snake episode comes out in season six, so we're a little bit away from that now. But uh, it, sake. It, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. <laughs> Pl- the- plot twist: We get Jake Roberts to guest star on that. Oh, episode. that'd be great, wouldn't it? Ma- make it happen. Put me out there. Uh, has the connections to Jake Roberts, much less studios at gmail.com. That's our contact information. <laughs> Andrew goes down, starts trying to get a door open. He can't get it open. Claire sees the elegant woman again. He mentions her daughter, Jane, again. Yep, so sad. But see, as she's walking through, as she's walking through all those empty picture frames, and I'll be honest, at first, like when they first walk up to that carousel, like, okay. You you see the picture frames, but you're not really you're not really focusing that there's no damn pictures in it. Um, but then they get to the carousel or whatever, and then when they come back the second time, you see their empty picture frames, and then you know your your mind can instantly be like, okay, these people that are captured are in these picture frames. Yeah, I did pick up on that a little bit. But they're also at the whispering in. Because it's weird how that works. Because there's no picture frames there. There's just like old ass wood and wheels. But we won't get into that. Hey, that's before the days, like in the 80s, where you had those Budweiser promotions and like pictures of girls with thongs in your uh, bar. And Spud McKenzie. <laughs> who's that? I ever heard the name, but it's the dog. Oh, that's right. Shit, I haven't heard that in a long time. You are welcome. Well, I just remember the, the Clydale uh, horses. Yes. Or Clydesdale, yeah. 
Louise's face is stuck on the wall. Claire pulls the levers and goes to the secret door. And that's that seems to be one of our really popular like creepy house or like mystical things where like the whole door has to rotate. It, it do the same thing in the. Dude, uh, I love I love those dark. fucking trap doors. Love oh, yeah. them. When was the last time you actually saw one in real life? <laughs> in real life, yep. Not one that rotates. I'll tell you that. But I have on like YouTube and shit. I've been seeing those like bookshelf doors okay um those are pretty cool uh but never seen one that actually rotates you know if i ever get a custom house bill i'm gonna build like some cigarette oh dude that'd be awesome yeah just need some a good architect the doors open downstairs and andrew discovers that his magical fit and has something to do with the plot the wind was something in the house and master raymond Meanwhile, Clara gets up, sees Louise is frozen in a rocking chair. Andrew comes up young for her. She says she's on the other side of the wall. He goes up, and then in that, like, hand solo type of, like... Carbonite. Yeah, carbonite in the yeah. wall there. It's now Master Raymond. He starts freaking him out. He tries to use this little mini fan to lure him away. Then it comes to the other side. And now Master Raymond is, uh, Master getting all over the place because now he's next to Louise. He says, when the sun set, her soul will be his. Says her energy will keep him alive and the house. This is kind of similar to the like, Capture Souls episode where right. someone's draining so life out somebody. Here's, here's something I just realized. How many people were in that whispering in? Souls-wise. Well, it would have been about four or five. Okay, so we got... We got the fifties couple. We got the old lady mm-hmm. Victorian. Mm-hmm. We got the salesman. Mm-hmm. We got the you know sixties seventies guy. Five. All right. So from Victorian era, how many leap years do you think have passed? And he only has five souls. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in a moment here. Oh, I skipped ahead of you. Oh, it's because yeah, and we'll start seeing this thing come from a circle. Wow. What was the other episode we would notice that though? Or like it was like a lot of time that we just saw like three people. Right. Yeah. I really think it came down to the budget. <laughs> it it was pro it was probably the uh captured souls one. Oh yeah, that's right, where he's been like training life for, like uh I don't know, sixty to eighty years and like there's already like uh twenty people there or something yeah. like that. Hey, best guy stay afloat somehow. <laughs> they say he's a monster. And they look for shit to get rid of him. That's when Andrew throws that vase out the window, causing wind to come in. They try to get out. The fan doesn't work again at downstairs when Master even finds him. Those fans never fucking work. Uh, I don't even know why he bothered with it. Well, well my, th- my thing in this scene, he lures Louise back with a trance, then gets Claire to a trance. And he's kind of standing next to them, kind of oddly. And he says, run along, little boy. And the guy just wants that. I'm, I'm thinking this is straight up like human trafficking right here. I mean, he <laughs> just wants like females and that's it. Oh, I mean, why why leave a witness? Might as well just trans him too. Uh, the old woman, Violet, comes back out. Says that she won't let him do it. Says they're so young. He tries forcing her to go back. But then she opens the door, which gets rid of him. And they come out of that trance, and the elegant woman says for them to go quickly. Now, here's what we talked about briefly earlier, Ben. The subcontacts him, him say to shut the door. I was thinking, was this a ploy to make kids shut the door to save energy like our parents did in the 90s? I mean, maybe, because they never, they never in the whole time did they say, why wind? Why wind affects this shit when they can be in two places at one time? When they can be in the mansion? When they can be in the the inn? Like, what the hell does wind have to do with it? Yeah, I mean, whispering walls, whispering in. There's there's nothing with wind here, and it would have been moon because they keep mentioning the leap year that. Uh, the oh, yeah, they, full nothing. moon. What the hell is that? Oh, they, they could have done this episode without mentioning the leap year. Wait a minute. Maybe that's why there's so few people because it has to be a full moon 
on a leap. Oh, that's right. That makes sense then. So, Although that brings me to my next point, which is the plot hole of this. Where's, where's their parents? No, that's always, oh. that's always <laughs> plot hole. Okay. Okay. Here's a, here's an ending here. All three of them get to the car, which now, of course, fucking works. Of course. Well, and then not so surprised, twist ending. Salesman fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they leave, and like a, it seems like immediately afterwards, some other person breaks down right for the house yeah, as well. pulls up with a map, like, what the fuck? And I'm pretty sure they would have saw them, because I mean, yeah. they were driving like 50 miles an hour out of there. I've been, I've been reading this map upside down the whole time. Yeah, you see how it. it keeps twisting it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they always have to do that. It's upside down. <laughs> yeah. When the words be off. God. So it had nothing to do with the mask that Mary Beth was wearing. Yeah, well, well here's the thing. <laughs> this guy is right behind them. <sighs> apparently at the same time. But Betty Ann says that the house still stands and is still doing that today. And people still disappear when there's a full moon on February 29th. So is it one person for every full moon? Is it 20 people coming that same day? What's happening over there? Now, I looked this up, Ben, just for some chronological things. Okay. All right, just for, for some real history here. Season two of Are You Afraid of the Dark premiered on YTV in Canada on September 25th, 1991. We're about eight episodes deep into this Was thing. it a leap year? Well, that's the thing, Ben. Yeah. This episode, it doesn't tell me when exactly it aired in Canada, but this would have aired in 1992, based on what I'm seeing here on Wikipedia, just assuming. Okay. Now, a leap year in 1992 did happen. However, this episode premiered in America on July 21st, 2000, <laughs> or sorry, I'm waiting myself, July 31st, 1993. So we're Almost a year behind. Okay. Season three, by the way, uh, debuted October 28th, 1992 in Canada. So we already should have known about the leap years. Yeah, well, I have, unless I really want to do deep in here, I I can go back and find out when there was a full moon on leap years. But yeah, that would have been very, very rare, I think, for that to happen like every four years. I mean, maybe we're doing this like every 20 to 50, maybe. Who knows? <clears throat> Are you afraid of the darkness? Yeah. Well, I, I was watching this originally on the Canadian YouTube of where, where this show was uploaded legitly. I have a plug-in on my Chrome, which allows me to watch it in America. But I was reading the comments, and some people were saying this was their favorite episode of the series. God damn. Yeah, I don't know where they got that from. I mean, it, I didn't think it was as bad as I, I think you thought it was. Oh, that's the... I think it needed a lot of fucking work. That's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the concept, but yeah, why does it have to be a leap year for one? Why couldn't it just be like a full moon? Because <sighs> then they'd have to hire more extras. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my major great with this one was the acting. I thought this was probably the worst acted episode that I've seen so far in the series. Acting, plot. it's always It always comes down to that. You can have terrible props. Yeah. You can have, like, but if... If the people that acted in this don't want to put their fucking name on it, then we've got a fucking problem. Yeah, that is absolutely true. However, what, what about the scare factor? What scare factor? There, it made the fucking the the, the, do, the snake and the doll. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I wasn't scared that this uh, banana split fell on the floor and started smoking. I, I, I think it was a fun episode of the fact that it has the things that I liked as a kid and I like now, which is abandoned spots that may have life behind it still. Well, and having to explore those factors. I'll tell you the picture frame things when they were walking by you, it, you could not like you knew you knew with them walking by it again and you already met the souls. Then walking by these empty picture frames, you know, they're going to put the ghosts in there. Let me tell you something that's terrifying. Return to Oz, when they're walking by all those fucking heads in those glass cases, that's terrifying. Oh, yeah. I remember now, watching that when I was like 
four years old. Like, what the fuck is this yeah. shit? Maybe, maybe that's why I'm so fucked up nowadays. So. I mean, we both are, but yeah. th- these, this picture frame shit doesn't give that factor like that shit would. And you know, my favorite thing is uh, the, the target age for all your fear of the dark seem to be between about seven and 12 to 13 age bracket. Return to Oz. I mean, like, The Wizard of Oz is one of those movies I think a lot of people, that that's the first movie they've ever seen in their life. So we're talking three to five years old. Maybe even younger. And that movie was fucking ten times scarier than probably nine percent of all your Afraid of the Darks episodes. Yes. But, uh, yeah, that's a different kind of vibe they were going for. I don't think this episode holds up at all over time. It's it's very dated. I agree with you, and like I said, I don't remember this one. So it's either I didn't see it, or it didn't it didn't hold enough weight to remember it. Uh, Andy came by today, and he was t- like, I told him that we were doing this podcast thing, and he told me the ones that he remembered, and we've already done them. But funny enough. Laughing in the Dark was not one of the ones that he brought up. Oh, really? He brought up Pinball Wizard, Mm -hmm. Frozen Ghost, and he brought up, um, shit, it was one more. I think it was was season one or two. I think it was Dark Dragon. Oh, really? Um, But... (laughs) Yeah, I was like, you 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 only knew Frozen Ghost because of Melissa Joan Hart, you know? But, uh, well, you know, I was thinking about this the other day because I was thinking like season one and two, I remember these episodes very vividly, d- depending on which ones. For instance, this one, I didn't recognize it by name, but as soon as I saw the characters, I re- remembered a lot of the plot. And I think it's because these being the older seasons, they were in reruns more. For instance, I may have seen Laughing in the Dark and The Tale of Dark Music 12 times, and then I saw something from season five, maybe twice. And that was it. Right. And especially considering the original run again of this, of All You Afraid of the Dark, that was done in 1996. And by that time, I had puberty. And I can't remember if All You Afraid of the Dark was in reruns constantly throughout the three-year time bracket that the show was on hiatus, but I was not watching it when I was 17, I can assure you of that. Or 16 when it, season seven was there in 2000. <laughs> Yeah, by then you were looking for some over the over the clothes touching. Oh yeah, I, I can't blame you for that. All right, well, thanks again <laughs> for listening, everybody. Be sure to leave us the next review. If you have any questions, comments for us, studios at gmail dot com. Start commenting on our Facebook. Oh yeah, uh, f- Facebook is facebook dot com slash We're Not Afraid of the Dark. I'm seeing likes, but I'm not seeing any comments. We want your feedback, guys. Hey, maybe we should put some fucking content on there. No we should. We okay. need, that's why I was taking pictures of this uh, this alcohol spread I got over here. Yeah, don't to, oh, by the way, don't take pictures of me because I, I, I've been on a bad sleep schedule. I just had to work over a two-hour nap. I've been up for like 22 hours, so uh, oh, it's, it's a little rough right yeah, now. Yeah, he looks a little, looks like Hagrid. No. Uh. Who rainy when we leave you in your casket? That's tragic. Beat me in my genie flying past it. I'm Aladdin getting blasted. Blasting this rap shit. Plaster black and now talking smack with savage crackers. I'd rather be a jackass than average, I guess. I'm just a savage at that practice. Like a master, no less the best.